Everyone gonna go ahead and do a video on changing out the cooling system on the 72 Challenger Rally. Uh, got a new radiator, water pump, thermostat, thermostat housing, gasket, you name it. The radiator supposedly did have a little leak in it from the previous owner told me about it. I haven't personally seen anything, but since he had most of the parts, figured go ahead, change everything, then we know we'll be good to go, good cooling in it, you name it. Uh, before that, I wanted to give you a quick update. We did get a new, what was supposed to be a drivetrain for the K5. It is a 89 GMC Rally van. It has a 350 with a 700R trans, and it was only 400 bucks. Threw a new battery in it, and it is a running, driving van. So I'm gonna use it as a parts runner for right now. Uh, again, I bought it for a drivetrain, but it's kind of too nice to cut up, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty clean inside. Don't mind my mess that's in it right now. But interior is really clean. Does have a rear seat in the back and then open in the back for cargo. Um, the AC doesn't work, but you got these big old vent windows, which those actually push out a lot of air. Uh, got power locks, power windows, which is surprising for an 89. No real rust on it. Obviously the paint's fading in some areas. Does have some rust up here in the drip rail. Um, not actually going down into the roof, but just really the edges of it. And then it has some in the back does need paint on the hood is shot so probably go and give that a coat of spray paint and really just the whole side down here it's got a few spots over here so maybe just this gray section it's got the clear coat peeling off may sand it down and just give it a quick spray can wipe down on that but again pretty pretty clean the guy that had it before used it to Take stuff to swap meets. And I've already put about 50 miles on it, just driving it around town and absolutely no issues. So again, kind of hard to maybe cut this one up, especially since we just need the drivetrain, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll find another drivetrain when I'm ready for it for the K5. So the K5, don't mind the mess of the shop. I did get the frame out from underneath it and a little bit sketchy, but it's done. So up next for the frame on this, not in this video, but in the next video we'll probably do. I'm gonna get everything stripped off of this, have a dustless blasting guy that's gonna come out and blast it all. And then I can start on the suspension, going to be doing a full body drop on it, figured for what it would be to do a lowering kit on it, Switching stuff out, I may as well four link the rear. If I'm gonna four link it, I may as well bag it. And if I bag it, I may as well body drop it. So that's pretty much how everything always goes, right? But we'll go ahead and get started on the Challenger and swapping out the cooling system. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is put the drain pan underneath the lower radiator hose. Gonna go ahead and drain it from there. Um, hopefully not make too much of a mess. We'll probably make a big mess. And then we can go ahead and start taking off the fans, the radiator, water pump, you name it. All right, so on your radiator, you should have a drain. Uh, mine's down here on the driver's side. It does look a little crusty, but we're gonna try and open that up and see if we can slowly drain it from there. We're not in a hurry, so may as well try and do it that way instead of getting a flood coming out if we just undid the lower radiator hose. All right, so I was able to get the drain popped. And as you can see, everything coming out right now is pretty clear. So it's probably just water in this radiator, which definitely glad changing it out, but it's also good that if you do make a mess and it's just water, it's a little bit easier to clean up and not have to worry about than antifreeze. So we're gonna go ahead and let this drain for a while and then start pulling everything off. All right, so while that's draining, I've gone ahead and loosened up the hose clamps on all of the radiator hoses. Um, got the upper that goes into the thermostat housing, the water pump to the intake, water pump heater hose, as well as the lower radiator hose. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take the upper off and then remove the thermostat housing because we are going to replace that as well as the thermostat itself. Now this thermostat gasket is one area where I did see a leak on it. So I didn't actually see from the lower radiator, but I did see from here and I can see where it's got a gasket, but it's also got some RTV around it. So replacing this is definitely the right way to go. tell it's pretty crusty in there. Not too bad though, definitely seen worse. And your thermostat is not supposed to look like that with the spring loose. So good thing we took this off to replace it. I'm going to go ahead and get a gasket scraper and scrape all this off so that way we make sure when we put on the new gasket it'll seal up a lot better than what this one was doing. Alright so for this you can use whatever tool you want to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead I just like using razor blade flat and then just try and keep everything away from falling in the intake. Now that we got most of that cleaned off, we'll take some gasket remover, spray with it, wipe it down, clean it up a little bit more, and then we can start putting in the new thermostat, uh, gasket, and the housing. All right, so to remove the radiator, you've got four 9 16ths bolts. Um, so you'll need to get a socket on one end, probably an open end on the other, and two on the top, two on the bottom, and then you'll be able to lift the radiator out. All right, and I also have a trans cooler down in here. So that's just two lines, again, with hose clamps. Go ahead and remove that because it's connected to the radiator. And that way we can lift everything all up at once. All right, now that all that's disconnected, we'll go ahead and remove the radiator.
All right, now that we got the radiator removed, that gives us space to go ahead and pull off the belts, undo some of the brackets so we can get the water pump off. All right, so we should be able just to loosen the power steering bracket and then that'll give us enough room that we can take off the belt and then start to get to the bolts for the water pump. Uh, this is a 9 16 bolt. You'll see there is one that is slotted, so if you use that one, that should give you enough wiggle room to loosen the slack on the belt and get it off. Gave us just enough, had to loosen the top one, but just enough to loosen the belt. You can slide the belt off. And then now we can access all the bolts for the water pump. These are 9 16 as well. You will want to make sure that you keep the orientation of the bolts because some are longer than others. Alright, so an easy trick to keep your bolts organized is when you're removing them, put your new water pump and figure out which bolt you pulled out and put it in that hole. So as you're pulling them out, you drop the bolts in, so when you're ready to put the water pump back on, you know exactly which bolts go where. This one does not have anything on the back end of it. And then we've got two bolts down on the bottom and then we're done. Right, you will need an extension on these bottom ones just to fit in between the pump and the pulley.
bottom bolt has this little bracket on it. Just want to keep that a part of it too. Okay. And now we should be able to pull it off. I do still have the lower radiator hose on here, so I'll probably have to angle it a little bit, but shouldn't be too hard. Out goes the water pump. All right, so now that I've got everything out, I went ahead and took the new water pump and I just gave it a quick coat of a semi-gloss black so it's drying outside. Gonna go ahead and start putting things back together. I did get a Mr. Gasket 180 degree thermostat. It's about 20 bucks, so it is more expensive than some of the other ones, but hopefully so it'll work good. You won't have to worry about it and it won't self-destruct like the other one. So we'll go ahead and put the thermostat in. Then the gasket that I got, I went ahead and took off the backing, off the back side so it is sticky. That'll go over the thermostat, making sure you're lining up the bolt holes. As my battery's going out. And then we're gonna go and put on the thermostat housing. All right, so I got the new housing. As you can see, it does have a little inlet to fit the thermostat. So that'll go right over. And then we'll take the hardware and bolt it down. All right, now that I got the water pump all painted black, got the pulley taken off the old one, just use an impact on these bolts there, half inch, um, and then put the pulley back on. And now we'll go ahead and get this lined up to put it back on. Then we'll take our gasket. Uh, the water pump I got came with the gasket, but I went ahead and paid the extra four bucks and got a Felpro one. do is again just remembering how these bolts went in here with the washers behind them
Make sure you get your gasket lined up. And start your bolt. Once you get them all started, you can go ahead and get the rest all bolted in. All right, so now we got all the bolts started. Make sure they're in there good. Make sure the gasket's sitting in good. We'll go ahead and tighten them down. Good. And next up is we will take our belt and put it back on. Make sure we get in the right grooves. And then we can adjust this bracket for the power steering pump back so it's tight. Loosen that up, it's gonna be a little bit more wiggle room. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and put in the new Champion aluminum radiator. Get that in, bolt it in, and then do the new transmission cooler that we got and hook that up through the front end. So this is the Champion Radiator. As you can see, it's a nice unit. You'll maybe not see too much, but it's a direct fit for these cars, which makes it real nice and easy. It's already got the tabs. The top tab is one that you slide in. So at the bottom. Lower radiator hose was holding up. It looks like the trans cooler lines are as well too. So I'll have to move those. Now we'll get this bolted in. All right, so it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I did get the trans cooler installed. It came with the mounting bracket, or the mounting tab, kind of plastic things you push through, and then connected in with some hose clamps. And now I just have to do the lower radiator, upper radiator hose, and connect in my fan, and we'll be good to go and ready to start putting some fluid in it.
right. And there's the full install. Um, let's say I do have to connect in my e fan. Um, the e fan wasn't working, so I'm going to have to test it probably with some of this janky wiring that's going on over here. But we're going to test of that, get the e fan working. All right, guys, well, that's how you install a brand new water pump, radiator, transmission cooler into a 72 Challenger e body. Cuda, I believe, is about the same. All in all, probably about two hours worth of time between having to run to the parts store and get a few things. But gonna go ahead next up and clean up some of this janky wiring that's in here because when I started looking at it doing this project, it's pretty bad. Um, and then go on to working on fixing the exhaust. It's got a exhaust hanger that's broken, so it's sitting on the axle, so it's clunking around a lot. So getting that fixed and then working on some other stuff. So stay tuned, thanks for watching.